North Korea's recent claims of progress on its nuclear and missile technology have been ratcheting up tensions on the peninsula. Our Hong Sung Yi sat down with Professor John Eikenberry of Princeton University for his views on the North's claims and how the international community should deal with the regime. What do you make of the recent claims by North Korea about progress in its nuclear program and its recent testing of the submarine launched ballistic missile? I'm skeptical. Uh, but they clearly are making progress. They've surprised uh, the world at how far they've come already. They've surprised the Chinese as well. So uh, I think uh, they're moving forward, uh, but maybe not quite as quickly as they claim. Secretary Kerry recently warned of more sanctions on North Korea. Do you think this is the right way to go in approaching North Korea at this point in time? Uh, you have to send a double message. One is that there is uh, uh, a, a huge price for what you're doing, uh, but there's also a huge prize, shall we say, for uh, making the heroic steps to try to come back into the international community and, uh, and uh, make uh, the peninsula nuclear free. Do you see a need for China to play an even stronger role? They are clearly unhappy with North Korea. The, there's been a general, I, I'd say, movement across the, the last four or five years towards more aggravation, indeed quite uh, um, explicit uh, unhappiness that they've uh, manifest through symbolically and otherwise to North Korea. Yet at the same time, they are not willing to uh, push the full distance, fearing collapse, fearing further crisis. Uh, so they are in a position where they would like to see North Korea uh, make steps towards reform, but they are not yet at the point where they are willing to bring it to a full crisis point, and so, so they are not doing all they could do. And there are reports of a series of executions, purges of senior officials, and there are mixed opinions about regime stability. What's your view? The announcements of their demise have been made frequently over many, many decades, and uh, they've survived. And uh, so uh, I don't think that uh, we know, and it may come at a very surprising moment out of the blue, but uh, uh, I think we have to assume that it's going to be there, the regime's going to be there for a while, and, uh, uh, and plan accordingly. The six-party talks has been stalled for a long time, but considering the uh, tensions in the region and among the five parties, do you think it's still an effective tool to get North Korea to denuclearize, or do we need a new form of dialogue? Quiet talks that, are, that aren't in a kind of formal format are, are where you need to go first, but, but uh, I think for purposes of, of ratifying uh, future agreements and legitimating uh, uh, the kind of framework that might lead to serious change. The six-party talks are a format that needs to be left in place and ready for action, shall we say. Thank you, Professor, for your time today. Thank you.